This special sushi omakase spot in Tokyo might just have it all. Elegant ambiance, mesmerizing craftsmanship, easygoing chefs, reasonable pricing, and most importantly, top tier authentic and delicious sushi. This is Sushi Ginza Onodera, a Michelin recognized and world renowned establishment that's become highly acclaimed for its high end Edo style sushi. But don't take my word for it, take a look for yourself as we go through a piece by piece breakdown of their two popular omakase lunch courses. Their first and most affordable lunch course consists of 12 pieces of sushi total, in addition to an appetizer, soup, and dessert. The second seasonal omakase course is about 2,000 yen more and adds on three extra pieces of sushi. Because these courses are omakase, which essentially translates to chef's choice, the offerings change with seasonality and availability, making each visit a delightful surprise. This also ensures that you're being served the freshest and highest quality ingredients, procured daily by sushi experts. First up is the appetizer, a chilled, savory egg custard adorned with plump, jewel-like salmon roe and fresh wasabi. This dish is a staple in traditional Japanese cuisine and is known for its light and delicate umami, often used to cleanse the palate before more intense flavors. The texture is incredibly smooth, almost silk-like, and allows the full flavor of the fresh salmon roe to burst through with each bite. Additionally, the freshly grated wasabi adds a perfectly sharp, spicy, and nuanced flavor dimension that complements the umami excellently. And now for the sushi. First up is Striped Jack, also known as White Trevely. It offers clean, balanced sweetness. The texture is soft, tender, and slightly sticky, which enhances the flavor and makes it linger longer on the palate. Second was Japanese cuttlefish, adorned with salt and a squeeze of sadachi. It had a tender and slightly chewy texture, which paired perfectly with the citrusy burst of sadachi. The salt also helped highlight the natural sweetness of the squid for a smooth, creamy, and toothsome bite. Next, we have tuna that's been pickled and marinated in a soy sauce and yuzu based mixture. This marination process was originally developed in the Edo period to preserve the fish. Here, it enhanced the tuna's richness, infusing it with deep umami, a splash of brightness, and a smooth, velvety finish. As a side note, this seems to be a fairly common piece across many omakase sets in Japan. And now we have our first shellfish, a snow crab from the Hokkaido prefecture. The sweetness of the crab is almost buttery, with delicate brininess that enhances its natural flavors. Snow crab from Hokkaido is particularly sought after for its tender meat and rich flavor, making this piece a true delicacy. Next came bonito, smoked with Sakura wood chips. Smoking bonito is a traditional technique that adds a layer of sweet and woody complexity to its flavor. The combination of the smoky aroma and the umami rich fish creates a deep and satisfying bite, while also removing a lot of the fishiness. And now, pulled fresh from the tank, we have a choice of botan shrimp and tiger prawn. The botan shrimp is served raw and comes included with the course. The tiger prawn costs extra and is served cooked. But as for the botan shrimp, it's known for its plump and juicy texture, in addition to its clean, intense sweetness that lingers. Served raw, it's a smooth, creamy, and silky delight that highlights the exceptional flavor of peak freshness. Next was horse mackerel, one of the many standout pieces of the meal. This piece was impeccably fresh, ensuring that there was no hint of the strong fishiness that's sometimes characteristic of mackerel. Additionally, the texture was a soft, buttery, melt-away consistency with an oily, savory, and full-bodied essence. This was balanced by the perfectly proportioned fresh ginger and green onion, creating a bright flavor contrast that made this one of the most memorable bites. Up next is another classic, the tender and fatty meat scraped from between the ribs of the bluefin tuna. It has a uniquely soft, slightly fibrous texture and also showcases the ethos of how every part of the fish can be made delicious. Next up, we have an exciting and exotic looking delight that's a mainstay for authentic sushi courses. This is surf clam, known for its firm texture and sweet flavor. Here, it's lightly and beautifully grilled, which helps bring out the flavors in addition to adding a light and delectable char dimension. 
And deep into the course, we get a classic favourite. Often considered the star of any sushi meal due to its luxurious texture and depth of flavour, medium fatty tuna is supreme in terms of deliciousness. The piece strikes the perfect balance between richness and melt-in-your-mouth texture with a nuanced bite that is both indulgent and refined. Also considered one of the most luxurious sushi offerings, sea urchin was served next. Each diner is given a choice between murasaki uni, which is generally more creamy, and buffoon uni, which is typically sweeter. And if you can't choose just one, you can try both, but for an additional charge. Essentially, both were absolutely sublime, as both pieces were delicate, creamy, sweet, and free of any bitterness. And finally, we have the last piece of the course, a classic finishing bite that you'll see at most traditional omakase. This dish is often seen as a test of a sushi chef's skill, as the perfect tamagoyaki requires precise timing and technique. After hot tea is served, the chef graces you with dessert, a delicate, refined, and stunning coconut blanc mange with matcha sauce. This delectable work of art combines the rich, milky sweetness of coconut with the slight bitterness of matcha, creating a perfectly balanced and refreshing end to our omakase journey. And that's everything served in course number one. So now we can take a look at course two. Though, because the second visit was within the same month as the first, there's quite a bit of crossover. And while you can expect the exact course content to change with seasonality, here's a quick look at the pieces that were different. The first new piece was Young Snapper, cured with sweet vinegar and with a mild shrimp topping. The vinegar added a delicate sweetness and subtle tartness, creating a refined balance of flavours that highlight the fish's natural elegance. While hard to fully describe the nuanced flavour and texture combination, this was one of the favourites from the second course. And next was rockfish, a rare and luxurious deep sea fish prized for its rich, fatty meat. This piece was intricately prepared with light grilling to bring out the natural oils and then accompanied by green onion and freshly grated daikon. The tender, juicy interior combined with the charred exterior created a multi-dimensional experience across flavour and texture. Next, we have a traditional Japanese clam that is celebrated for its naturally sweet and delicate flavour. This piece is served with a light yet sweet and viscous sauce, which subtly enhances the clam's inherent sweetness. The tender, yet slightly firm texture is allowed to shine, creating a refined and balanced bite that highlights the true essence of this prized shellfish. And at long last, we have the infamous fatty bluefin tuna. Unlike the medium fatty tuna from the previous course, this is classified as the fattiest cut from the tuna belly with the highest fat marbling. The peak fat content gives it a supremely soft, rich, and melt-in-your-mouth texture that's often considered the epitome of luxury in sushi. At the very end of the meal was the tried and true tuna roll. The bright red tuna wrapped in vinegared rice and aromatic nori delivered a clean, straightforward flavour. Without any distractions, the impeccable tuna quality was put on full display. And that's it for all the pieces across the two lunch courses. But before we wrap up, here's a few important things to know in case you'd like to try this sushi for yourself. Most importantly, this restaurant is genuinely world-renowned and therefore a tad difficult to secure a spot. Reservations are essentially required, but are offered 60 days in advance on a rolling basis, though they're usually fully booked at least a month out, and it's recommended to plan and reserve accordingly. Secondly, while the atmosphere is warm, friendly and inviting, it's an elegant and intimate space where standard omakase etiquette should be respected. But all in all, Sushi Ginza Onodera appears to be well deserving of its acclaim as a premier sushi experience. Not only do they provide outstanding top-tier omakase that's characteristic of Tokyo's fine sushi culture, but they do so with deep dedication to sharing the art of sushi with everyone. Making high-end sushi not only accessible but delightful and joyful is what makes this spot truly unique. So I highly recommend it to anyone who's looking to dip their toes into the incredible world of fine Japanese sushi. But that's all for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope this helps you in your own Japan sushi explorations. Until next time, cheers.